Hello everybody that's here, very happy to see all of you on the other side of the screen. Thank you for joining me in my quest of looking into the current crop of enthusiast class water blocks for 4000 series of graphical cards. Today we have a bonus content which wasn't part of the original plan. Let me spend uh, two minutes of giving you a little backstory here. So basically we finished testing of all six blocks that we selected for this series of videos and I was sharing my preliminary results with my friend and confidence owner of performance PCs in the United States and we both feel that maybe we're missing one more block that also exotic and maybe not very well known outside of the United States but regarded as a high performing type of the block and shouldn't be missed so we're talking about Optimus water cooling and the block which is called Optimus Signature so what's happened here is basically Performance PC helped to obtain this block and connected me with Optimus we're not working with Optimus directly and Optimus agreed to basically send us as a sample for the review and test with no strings attached. So I would like to thank Optimus for being uh, forthcoming and give us opportunity to look at their product. On that note, I'd like to give a big shout out to Performance PC for help they provided. They not only the biggest store in the United States, they're probably one of the biggest store worldwide. They have a huge variety of the parts, not only water cooling, modding, but they also offer a big set of custom services, which other stores usually don't do. You can order custom parts, you can paint them, you can have modification to existing parts. So this is a pretty crazy place to be at if you need to build your dream PC, that probably is a one-stop place where you can get anything you want including a lot of custom stuff let's look into unboxing and installing this block on our gpu it's first time i'm working with optimus so never had their product before we have a gift of two little stickers and look actual paper manual the only other company who provided paper manual so far was alpha cool i appreciate that because uh, i always print it out and old school trying to look at the paper rather than on the screen. So this is the first half of the block. We also have a back plate. So black finish, it's quite unusual. We, I don't think there are any other company in the world that making black blocks, completely I mean, except of the some parts that made out of acetal. So this is actually a fully metal block that is a power coated or serra coated, I think that's how they called it, in the black. Look, we have another block in our lineup that has uh, this unusual type of um, setup where the part which is connected to the main graphical chip is actually a separate part like a CPU like. So we have the same with uh, heat killer and now we have a similar type of setup for the Optimus. It's quite interesting. The port is the same as any other traditional block. Also, I look quickly in the website, they're saying that the, the differentiate the same that they have much thicker piece of metal and much bigger chambers of water. So I can see this, those carving are quite deep. Also, another thing that um, Optimus is stating on the website is they have extremely tiny and small fins structure on the cooling plate. I can see this is quite small. We possibly will look later. I have some spare heat killer plates, so we can look how they compare. Because usually heat killer one of the blocks that has most dense fins. So this is definitely very high dense fins, which is important for you to know because you maybe need to pay additional attention to the cleaning your water loop because this tiny fin structure might work as a filter and get clogged so that's important so there's two sides of the story and a look at the back plate there you go big chunk of I think maybe it's aluminum but well I think it's aluminum but it's a little bit heavy could be a copper but I'm not sure. We need to look into that maybe sometimes later. So quite sick. It's probably even <laughs> sicker than heat killer we had before. 
So he killer was three millimeters. This this is like freaking five millimeters. So it's probably aluminum, just just a big big chunk of it. And quite unusual decision instead of having a bunch of thermal pads on a back plate, they just put one big piece of thermal pads on the back plate. And uh, interesting enough, I also saw in the manual prior to making this video that they don't even say that you need to change the thermal pod. So if you need to remove back plate, you can put it back and they say it will be no difference whatsoever. So no need to change thermal pods. Also, I can clearly recognize this as a Fuji Poly thermal pods by the um, how it looks and what kind of backing it has. So this is a good choice here. So thermal pod is, um, is here. And let's quickly look into the set of accessories that we received. Thermal paste to stop plugs, which is typically very traditional. Number of screws for installation. And we have this big range that you need for the thermal, uh, stop plugs if you want to use those stop plugs in your installation. Okay, so we can now proceed with the actual installation process looking by the manual they have a quite unusual type of installation that we haven't seen before this is a second block with unusual design after bits power so basically optimus block requires a back plate to be installed first never seen anything like this so but we will follow directions and just do what they say this part will be only only connected with three screws. It's absolutely impossible to see screw alignment due to the fact that everything is black, so you need probably a flashlight to see what alignment is, but hopefully we have it more or less correct way. And I need to find three short screws that will work. Uh, I think it's close enough, but we'll see. A little bit of tricky business here. As they say, gently place PCB, install three back plate screws, tighten usually alien key until thermal parts firmly compressed. Well, they say tighten it until everything is compressed. So let's just compress it. And basically, I go to the very end, that's the end of the story, without going crazy. Yep, okay. All right, so fully installed here. Part two, we need to place all thermal pods, which I didn't show you, but they provided. This is a Fuji poly pods, and they all pre cut it, which is a good thing. And also, Fuji poly extremely easy to peel, so that's why I personally like Fuji poly so much. But first, I need to purify the surfaces. And uh, keep reminding you to do so by using my Arctic Clean sets that I use. You can buy it at any computer store you like. And I will be back in a second with the final result when everything is ready. In pod installation very easy, quick process. Fuji Poly one of the easiest pods to work with, so it's a good choice. A little bit of deja vu with heat killer in terms of they cut it exactly for the size of the chips. So if you miss a little bit, you need to reapply. So half a millimeter on each side wouldn't hurt, but yeah, other than that, it's a very easy process. And when now we can continue with the block installation. 
So everything is here ready to go. Look how shiny, perfect finish with the CPU. Oh, not CPU, well, main chip area. And all we need to do is again try to align the holes. for the screws correctly and uh, just slow it down. I barely can see anything here to be honest but uh, I'll do my best. Oh wow. I can't see nothing. Seriously. I'll stand up for this one. Okay. I can see some of the screw holes, but not all of them. Okay. I think I align it mostly. So we give it a little bit of wiggle traditionally. And uh, connect the manual. We need to install the screws. Look, it's interesting that one half of the block is one side of the screws, the other side of the block is the other side of the screws. And also, don't, they don't say which way to install it. We traditionally will start with those screws that is around of the main chip area, and then we expand to the rest of the block and we need to pay attention that connector side would be 14 millimeters and to the port it will be 16 millimeters so we have a two size of the screws here so 14 here and here and 16 here and here so let's see if they will even latch Oh, that's a different size. Oh, I don't know why we need always change screwdrivers halfway. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can even latch it. Let's see if we can help our process with a little bit of Wow, a little bit of problem here, sorry, I'll have to take it away just to look what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Seems everything is in order. Just a little bit misaligned due to the fact that back plate is on three screws. So it's a little bit bulging this way. Yep. Okay. Let's nevertheless do right thing in in the this area. Yeah. So basically, we have a when we install back plate, we have kind of two screws here, one screw here. So this side was a little bit up because of that. That I believe what happened. So the screws didn't easily go. Uh, into the right position, but when I level it up, it's fine. So, let's latch all of them. At least a little bit, and now we can do our cross tightening procedure 
mounting pressure should be very firm and even across entire block well even when I understand the very tight I don't know yeah doesn't look you can install middle portion only so you need to tighten them all a little bit and they as you tighten up they actually give up more and more everywhere so it's more like random tightening here and there okay before I go too far I would like to check Look like I have a little bit of PCB band in that area, but yeah. So card a little bit go like this, but nothing crazy. So okay, let's go a little bit different way in the sense I'll have a screwdrivers I have some limit how tight you can go this thing is keep going down and down Oops. by a lot just making sure I'm not going anything more crazy than no small band but it doesn't really changes Actually, I think it's uh, kind of even out now when block is installed to final position. Okay, that was the last screw. Yep, okay. Actually, PCB is straight now. So, which is good news. So I was a little bit surprised. Maybe a little bit bent on this side. This side is good, this side a little bit bent. But overall, pretty good. Okay, so the last step left, we need to install the bracket. Bracket is only attached to the PCB itself. This is heavy block, almost uh, two kilograms, 1.9 kilo. So it will be a lot of stress with PCB in this area. So make sure you have a correct support for this block. And um, don't stress it out too much so let me find the bracket and all is done installation is complete pretty easy process one of the easiest block to install as long as you figure out how to deal with the backplate screw so unlike normal type of installation when you deal with the main screws first you actually need to start tightening everything across and just go like all of them so that's as soon as you figured out that installation process will be much easier extremely heavy block it shares the second and third place with heat killer 1.9 killer bracket attached to the pcb only so make sure you don't put too much stress on it to avoid any potential damage we have a usually better result so far with the blocks that use more metal than others so this will look promising but we'll come back to that after we actually do the test itself thank you for watching thank you again performance pc and optimus for providing the example we really appreciate it and we'll see you soon